So the Atlanta injury report has a big name, Eric Cole. Three to three, y'all. They're going back and forth. It's four to four. Oh, and Atlanta, five to four. Eric Cole? Eric Cole? He has a separated shoulder until June 21st. We're not going to lose three in a row. It, we can't. We just can't. At some point, it has to go for us. At some point, it has to go for us. looking at the injury report but I'm not even sure that it actually matters he's supposed to be out until August Jimmy Howard no look at look at the goalie look at their goalie look at look at their goalie yeah yeah the con Smythe is a guy with a broken finger who wasn't supposed to play until August oh the Carolina Hurricanes it's lose game seven Welcome back to the NHL 08 Dynasty Mode after a devastating Game 7 overtime, second overtime, Stanley Cup loss to the Detroit Red Wings. We are here in the offseason looking at the player stats from the last playoff run. Jordan Stahl, just a monumental effort, 40 points. He definitely would have won the Conn Smythe if we would have won the Cup. We had... The Stanley Cup was literally sitting on the tape on our blades so many times. It was bouncing off the crossbar and bouncing out instead of bouncing in. We were just just inches away from winning a Stanley Cup. We got as close as you can get without actually winning it. And it's it's just a it's a tough time. But looking at these players, you you can't help but but feel proud and and think that they did really well. I mean, these top 3 guys right here, that's those are crazy stats. These are the stats that you kind of see with the other teams, and you're just you're just like, how do you get that? Well, I got that this time. My guys actually were putting up those numbers, but we just we, we didn't didn't make it happen in the end. Matt Lassoff almost a point per game on defense. I mean, what a deal that ended that ended up being. Uh, I think we traded Ladislav Smead for him. Andrew Ladd. Uh, who knows if we're going to be able to sign him, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the cap space, who knows what, what we're, who we're going to lose, if we're going to lose anybody, uh, nobody knows. Wade Selios, a big, another big playoff run, this guy's a top player for us. Dave Boland ended up playing really well, Keith Ballard played well, everybody played well, man, you have to play well to make it to the Stanley Cup. Uh, it's just heartbreaking to lose it how we did when we did being that close but time moves on and we have to continue um you know we gotta we gotta do everything that we usually do we gotta set up the team for next season we gotta do the draft the re-signing the free agency we gotta deal with our cap space we gotta deal with all that and we gotta set it up again and, and go at it again next season you know three years in a row making the eastern conference finals um in that third year we finally make it to the stanley cup we just we just didn't get the Stanley Cup. You know, our core is there. We have solid players that, that are able to get it done. So it gives you hope going into future seasons that we're always going to be good. But, I mean, when you have one of those seasons where it doesn't simulate well for you, then you question everything. I mean, look at that. Jimmy Howard, broken finger until August 2nd. Yeah, right. Up here at the very top, Eric Cole. Uh, there it is. Eric Cole, sore shoulder, Ju June 20. Yeah, right. <sighs> yep, congrats to the Red Wings. Congrats to Con Smythe winner Jimmy Howard somehow. The Florida Panthers will have the first overall pick in this upcoming draft, followed by the Flames, the Devils, the Bruins, the Oilers, the Sabres somehow are there, even though we just played them in the playoffs. St. Louis Blues yet again. <sighs> Salary cap has gone up to 57.275. Um, that's a pretty good jump, but I'm sure we're going to have trouble fitting it under that anyways. And here are and here are the retirements. Paul Correa, Jerome McGinley has retired. Sheldon Sure, Corey Sarich retired. Sean Horkoff has retired. We have his son, Simon Horkoff. Michael Roosevelt. Nicholas Backstrom retires, Daniel Briere, Pavel Kubina, Thomas Caberlet. So no big retirements really.
So looking at our players that we need to sign, Andrew Ladd and Dave Boland are, are our best overall players. Looking at our salary cap that we have available, it looks like we have 15 million. What does that actually go up to? All right, so the most we can actually go up to is only 11.450. Um, so I, once again, just a weird calculation going on here. I don't know how much we can and can't offer, but either way, I don't think we're going to be able to sign Andrew Ladd and Dave Boland. Um, Dave Boland was kind of a waiver pickup. Uh, he wasn't necessarily supposed to be a, a, a deep part of this team. We're, we're deep at center anyway. We need wings, so we're definitely going to choose Andrew Ladd over Dave Boland. Brett Carson had a big jump. He jumped up to an 82, and now he wants $4 million. I mean, he did play good for us in the playoffs. He's really just been a an injury defenseman for us. He was minus nine in the playoffs, actually. But he's really just been an injury defenseman for us. He might have played his way off of this team. Nico Hovenen has also played himself up to an 83 overall, which makes sense. You know, he's 25, 83 potential, or 87 potential, 83 overall. Uh, but Cam Ward is still the guy, and I don't think I can give him two and a half million. So he might as he might have played his way off this team as well. But with Andrew Ladd, we're gonna go. We're gonna try to give him six years. Six years, seven million. Let's. Uh, I'm not gonna take too much money off of his asking price because I'm giving him giving him a lot of years, and plus come the the fourth, fifth, and sixth year of this contract, that salary might be decent compared to the rest of the league. I'm going to put it just a tick under $7 million just for my own mental health. Sergey Erdeshev, I want to have this guy back. He wants less than $2 million. He's 23 years old, 83 potential. He's been around 78, 79 overall his whole career here. And he's been here for three years. He's played three full seasons with us now. Um, and he's a good fourth-line guy for us. When you look at his stats, he's got 85 defensive awareness, and he's got 86 toughness, 99 durability. So he's not going to get hurt. He's going to be out there every game, killing penalties for you and playing good grinding hockey on your bottom lines. Hey, we actually hit with some of our draft picks here. Maxim Tursumbayev, 18 years old, 94 potential, left wing. Boris Korolyuk, 18-year-old, 90 potential defenseman. We actually drafted these guys, so look at us hitting a little bit. Andrew Ladd has re-signed for six years at just one tick under $7 million. I think that is a good contract. The more the salary cap goes up, the longer that six-year contract goes up, the more that value is going to look more and more towards league average and eventually maybe even below league average for someone of his caliber. He's going to be a high-level player for us for a long time now. Sergey Erdeshev has also been locked up for a long-term deal. A young center, Yuri Karpatsev, who might look NHL-ready this season, 82 potential, 76 overall, 22 years old, a young guy who might be ready. Fideyuk, the 24-year-old guy who played fourth-line time for us this season, he's grown one overall. I noticed his defensive awareness has gotten a little bit better, so maybe he can. I can actually trust him a little bit more with some consistent playing time. Just getting young guys locked up for long term. Simon Horkoff, he's, I'm pretty sure he locked in for six years. 22 years old, 75 overall, 99 potential. Rob Bootland, similar. Jesse Bolarice, just bring. Just, I'm just going to keep bringing this guy back for the AHL team. I signed this guy because he is one of our actual draft picks. Uh, so he's grown to a 70 overall. He's only got 79 potential, but we know he could probably crack the 80s if he gets better. Bob Gomez re-ups. He's 22 years old now. He's still a 66 overall, so he's not growing but we did draft him, and we need guys in the AHL, so we're just going to keep him around. Same thing with Brad Manlow. He's 23. He's not growing, but we need guys for the AHL. And here's our big first-round draft pick from this year, taking 28th overall or something like that. 18 years old, 63 overall, 94 potential. He's signed, as is Boris Korolyuk. So here we are on the very last day of the re-signing phase, June 30th. You can see it right there. I'm going to jump in, and you see I haven't signed these guys. I haven't signed Dave Boland. I haven't signed Brett Carson. I haven't signed Vasacek. I haven't signed any of these guys. Who's the goal? Hovenin? I haven't signed him. 
I'm not signing him. But watch what my assistant GM is going to do. Let's jump in. Look how much cap, sp cap space we have right now. We have 7 million, allegedly. We have 7 million in cap space. But I'm going to advance this day without... I'm not sending any offers. There's no teams... I haven't sent any offers. I'm advancing, and we're in free agency now. And when I come over here, I look on this side. 87 overall, there's no Dave Boland. There's no Dave Boland over here. So you already know what happened. They signed him for me. With seven million dollars in cap space, I could go after I could go after Henrik Sedin. I could go I could at least try to go after Dustin Brown or Phil Kessel. I could like try to make a move on some on one of these top guys. Keith Yandel. But let's go back to the contract screen and see what the computer signed him for. Contracts, what do you got for me? Forwards. 87 overall. I mean, they signed him again at 1.475. I mean, this is a great deal. This is a great deal for me. That's awesome. But why is the game doing that? It's it's basically just giving him the same contract that he had before. Then why would you re-sign anyone? So you're tell basically, if I would have just never re-signed Eric Stahl, I wouldn't have to keep paying him money. If I don't re-sign Jordan Stahl to a new contract, is it just gonna is it gonna re-up him for one year at two and a half million dollars for the rest of the time? I don't understand exactly what's happening. Like I'm I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to sign Tuomarutu after next season. If I don't sign him, is he just gonna re-up at three point seven five oh? I mean that's fine. What about the goalie? Where's the goalie at? Goalie's Hoven, and they re-signed him at 2.575. I don't... That's what he wanted. So, they didn't even give him what his old contract was. His old contract was less than that. That's the money that he wanted, and that's not how much I want to pay him. So, let's see. Do we have any money in free agency? Since it didn't sign Dave Boland to a $6 million contract, do we have any money? No. We have no money. Of course we don't have any money. And that is even with, so Dakiv and Telkvist are both in the AHL. Oh, wow. Look at Dakiv's growth. Dakiv has jumped up to an 80. Telkvist has jumped up to a 78. Oh, that's huge because these guys are getting to the age where they need, their potential's 96 and 93 if they're actually growing. Oh, my goodness. Lassoff has jumped up to an 88. Justin Keller. Justin Keller with huge growth from the kid. We got him signed long-term at 1.5. He's an 86 overall now. Wade Selios jumped up to an 82. Zinejev jumped up to an 81. He's still growing. Bob Bolerice. Look at the jump Bob Bolerice had. He's as good as David Colleton now, and he was in the AHL. He jumped up from like a 74 or a 75 up to a 79, 23 years old, 93 potential. Bob Bolerice got his jump. He's NHL ready. Peltola grew a little bit up to a 78. Wow, so we're getting good growth. So luckily, I think one of the only moves of me having to free up some space is going to be getting Hovenen off the roster. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take back two goalies in order for this trade to even go through because I have to have goalies on my roster. The game's just not going to let it happen. So I'm going to try to get Mikhail Suglobov and Wakabayashi. Really, this is just to free up some cap space. Hoven and played his way off the team. We're stuck at our cap right now, and we have some guys in the AHL we need to call up. My assistant GM signed Nico Hoven into a $2.5 million contract for our backup goalie. We don't need that, so hopefully this trade will go through. So I had to find some different goalies, but, I mean, same idea, same trade, just sending them to the Rangers. And they accepted it. I might should have thought about that a split second before sending him to the Rangers. Now they are going to have a pretty good goalie in a couple years. But they also have Henrik Lundqvist now, so I think they're set. You already know we don't really have salary cap space. Our salary cap is at 55 and a half. That only gives us maybe like a million and a half of room to play with. I mean, are we really going to find someone in free agency for a million and a half? Are we really going to find someone in free agency for a million and a half dollars that is really going to take a roster spot from one of our players? 
I don't think so. We can look at it just in case. Let's go over here to affordable. Who's the best player they got that's affordable? See, and, and it's a 78 overall. That's who Joseph Vasacek is. That's who our depth guys are. We don't need to sign any of these guys to replace their spots. So the salary cap is $57,275,000. If you look on the right side of the screen over there where the salary cap is, our spent salary cap is $57,275,000. We are we literally can't have a penny more on this team. Wow, that's interesting. I did best lines and it literally puts Wade Selios above Justin Keller. So it it kind of wants me to put Justin Keller in the like literally, look, best lines. It keeps Wade Selios above Justin Keller. So up here in October of the new season, it's October 1st. Let's see who didn't get signed in free agency. I know it's going to be a lot of guys. Jason Spezza, Phil Kessel, still not on a team. Dustin Brown, Henrik Sedin, Alex Edler, Yoni Pitkinen, Steve Eminger. All these guys are, oh my gosh, look at all these guys not signed on teams. Holy crap, man. There's just not enough money. There's not enough salary cap for for all these players to to go around all the the drafted players that have such high potentials are getting signed to cheap contracts and getting good overalls to the point where these guys that actually want money just don't have space on people's teams it's just it's it's messed up to see really you could have a team made out of just the guys stuck in free agency and this squad would do better than a lot they, they might would win the cup dude i mean that is a stacked team if all these guys were on the same team. I mean, that, that's a lot of guys, right? Yeah, they might would win the cup. So here's a look at the 2013-2014 Carolina Hurricanes. We've got Eric Stahl on the first line with Jordan Stahl. We know these two guys can carry this team on their backs. Tuomo Rutu is playing just as well as them. So him on the first line. Our first line has got to be one of the best in the league right now. Dave Boland on the second line center with Andrew Ladd and Wade Selios. I'm going to mix these guys up. I'm going to mix their wings up, whatever wings they're playing on this season. Wade Selios didn't quite have as good of a season as he did the year before when he was on the right wing. Um, Andrew Ladd, of course, he did have a good season, but we are going to move him to the right wing this season, and Wade Selios will have the left wing. Bob Bolarice, the kid getting the big call up, son of Jesse Bolarice. This guy is a playmaker. Um, it looks like he can score goals, but it says his play type is a playmaker. He has good passing. He has good offensive awareness. So maybe him and David Colleton can find some chemistry. David Colleton likes to score goals, so maybe Bolarice and Colleton can get something going on the third line with an 86. Overall, Justin Keller, the dude had a big jump up this season. On the fourth line, probably going to have Joseph Vasacek, a consistent player for us for so many years now. Sergei Erdeshev, another consistent player for us for so many years. And we're going to go with Fideyuk over Peltola. His defensive awareness is 81. His offensive awareness is 81. If we look at Peltola, his defensive awareness is only 77. So I think uh, I just, I'm going to go with the higher defensive awareness on this line, even though his overall is a little bit lower. On defense, Keith Ballard, Matt Lassoff, two studs on our first pairing. Love to see that. Tim Gleason and Peter Dakiv are going to be our second pairing. And really, we just have two second pairings because Zinajev is the same overall as Gleason and Carson is even better than Dakiv. So our third pairing is almost better than our second pairing. If we need to, we can switch Dakiv and Carson. Uh, but I, I want to see if Dakiv can grow even more. He had a big jump up this season from like a 74, 75 overall up to an 80. So I love to see that. Zinajev, this is another big year for him to see if he can grow. I don't think he grew that. He keeps getting injured. Zinajev is kind of injury prone and I don't like that. In goal, of course, we have a 91 overall Cam Ward. In the AHL, these guys are looking stacked. We've got some good players. Tim Payer, this guy we signed 21 years. He's 99 potential, 72 overall. I think last season when we signed him, he was like a 66 overall or something like that. So he got a big jump up this season. Tom Gleason, the guy we drafted, he didn't grow very much. 
he didn't grow very much. Let's let's try to let's try to put him on, up on a higher line. Arkatov, this is a guy we traded Justin Williams for, so we're gonna go Artikov or Arkatov on the first line. Brzgalov doesn't have any potential. I don't even know. He's just here. So Tom Gleason is gonna go up to the second line and get some time with with Payer. Chris Neal is up there to be tough for him. Actually, let's put Bootland up on the second line. Let's give these young guys with high potential some some real time. Um, yep, Karpatsev, he didn't make the NHL this season. Um, his offense, his offensive awareness is really good. His defensive awareness isn't as good. And you know, for the fourth line, we need those guys to have some defensive awareness. Jesse Bolarice, he's still here. He's just down here on the fourth line in the AHL, but his son has finally made it up to the NHL, representing the name well. Tim Gleason's still waiting on his son to get better. On defense, I mean, look at us on defense. We got Telkvist. He had a big jump up this season. He probably, this probably should be a season for him to play in the NHL, but his offensive awareness is only 56. And yeah, defensive awareness, his defensive awareness is good, but when you have like almost no offensive awareness, I just don't want that to mess up our simulation. So he's going to stay in the AHL until he can get his offensive awareness up. Maybe he, it just will never come up. Uh, Kirk Flaherty has now been sent back down. It was his 84 defensive awareness is really good. Um, it was just between him and Dakiv and Zinajev and Brett Carson. Brett Carson just had such a jump up that he he's too good to play depth injury for us now. Um, I wanted Kirk Flaherty to be our depth injury guy, but his salary is $1.25 million. And like I said, we literally have not a penny more that we can add to our salary cap space. So he can't be on the NHL roster. So this, so far, I think was our best offseason yet. We didn't have to get rid of any of our best players, and we had just a ton of growth. I guess my assistant GM threatened Dave Boland's family and made an 87 overall guy re-sign for $1.4 million at his old contract. I don't know what went down with that, but I'm glad that it happened. We re-signed Andrew Ladd long-term. Other than that, Justin Keller had some huge growth. Bob Bolarice had a big jump. Wade Selios even grew, even though it wasn't as much as some other guys. But his year is coming up to where he looks like he's primed to get a big jump up to the high 80s pretty soon. On defense, that's exactly what happened with Matt Lassoff. He, had, he went from like 84 up to an 88 now. He's better than Keith Ballard. Tim Gleason, Dakiv had a big jump. Brett Carson even had a big jump. Zinajev grows a little bit. So the team looks very, very similar to last season's team that made it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, except we look even better. So when you say it like that, my chances for this season, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling good about this upcoming season. It should be an automatic simulation. We should be going deep into the playoffs. Will it be a fourth year in a row where we make the Eastern Conference Finals? Will we make it to the Stanley Cup Finals two years in a row? I think this team is good enough to do it, and I think we're good enough to win the Cup this year. And all eyes will be on the Carolina Hurricanes in the 2013-2014 season. They need to have a successful year. At some point, it doesn't matter how successful you are over and over. If you can't actually bring the trophy home, then there's going to be questions about you no matter what. But you can't follow up three highly successful seasons with a failure of a season. You just can't have it happen. So this season, like I said, it should be an automatic simulation to the playoffs. And then I expect a deep playoff run. But that's a couple episodes from now. Join us next episode for the season simulation. We'll see how everyone goes. Be sure to join me next episode to see how all that plays out.